like to know your point of view. Hi everybody, welcome to Evening TV. Women who were abused as children are more tend more to pick bad boys than women who were treated who had a loving uh, father figure in the home growing up who received you know plenty of attention and had had a present figure in the home and in stable childhood those women do not choose bad quote unquote bad boys the same way had a dysfunctional relationship with our father and it is a, it's a total daddy issue thing if we had a dysfunctional relationship with our father we're going to be continuing to try to replay that relationship and get get that relationship right that's what we're doing so a lot of times what we'll do when we're picking relationships is we will we will choose something on a subconscious level that is familiar and familiar registers as right and it's not a conscious thing we might consciously be thinking i'm going to get the furthest thing about, uh, different from my father that i could possibly think of or the first the next guy furthest from my ex that I could possibly think of, and yet you repeatedly get the same guy in a different outfit. You know, different, you look completely different on the outside, different career, you know, might even be a different race, different, you know, everything different or anything, but ultimately ends up treating you the same way. You end up feeling the same way. Uh, uh, so on one level, we are trying to fix that relationship that we had with our father. We're trying to get it right this time. We're trying to get his love this time. We can do it, we can fix him. But it's even more, it's even more complicated than that. Studies done from the first, uh, developed the internet. The internet was essentially like kind of one of the very first things that kind of pushed it along into getting into getting developed was uh, men's searches for pornography. Eventually we were able to separate out male and female searches for pornography. And where men were searching for images, women were, were searching for literary um, representations of sex. And so they were looking for things in writing. They wanted things that they wanted like written narratives of sexual acts. And so this goes all the way back to like the Harlequin romances, but now it eventually evolved into, you know, things that turned out to be like Fifty Shades of Grey. The woman fantasy in all these, you know, predominant fantasy is a average kind of nice girl uh, comes and finds uh, an aggressive male and tames him. And this male will be in the form of one of five things will be in the form of a vampire, a pirate, a surgeon, a werewolf, or a billionaire. Okay, it's one of those five things. And obviously, it's that's showing an aggressive, dom you know, like in a dom dominance hierarchy, an aggressive dominant male. And then she comes in and she tames him. So, because of course, it's dangerous to get involved with someone like that. And so, the, the taming him is what, you know, just to make it all safe. But, the idea here is that in a, in a dangerous world, you have this defender. Where it goes really wrong, and what those of us who have, who have, been, who have experienced abuse come to realize, is that we think we're gonna be the exception. You know, we're meeting up with a guy who doesn't follow the rules, who is, you know, he's an outlier. He's, and, and of course, we don't want a criminal, we want someone who's successful also, which is the total fantasy of the Fifty Shades of Grey thing, the guys that, billionaire, he's, you know, young and handsome and a billionaire, and, you know, he hasn't, you know, he's not, he's not in prison, he's, you know, he's doing great. I think that if we get with this guy, our world would be safe. And what we come to realize is that we're no exception. He is all about himself. Women, just save women and children first, that's not them. These are the same, I'm saving myself first, screw you. You think that they seem like they're very masculine and all this kind of stuff, and you think that, you know, you're, they're going to take care of you and protect you, and they're not like that at all. They're not. They're not protected at all. You find yourself with someone who's actually very childish. You're you're actually becoming more and more masculine all the time because you have to take care of yourself and you have to take care of your children, and and you end up with more children. He's actually a child, so you actually end up having to take care take on more of the adult responsibilities for the family than you would have at all because he's he's not a, he's not like an adult. This is, you know, this is totally my experience. A, a vast array of reasons why we do this. If you're really young and you're picking bad boys, like you're, you know, a teenager or your early 20s, part of the reason you might be doing that is just for uh, experiences. You know, you might be doing it for exper experimentation. You don't want to settle down anyway, and he's not going to be asking you for one, so that makes that simple. And then you get to have wild experiences and spontaneity and um, uncertainty and all those exciting things. That could be one reason, but if you're in a stage where you're actually wanting to settle down, 
and you're choosing someone like that, there's other reasons you're doing it. And one reason can be low self-esteem. You don't really think you're worthy of all, you know, all this good treatment and stuff. And, and, you, and it would be unfamiliar to you if you'd been abused also, that if you get with someone who's treating you just so great, you would either be thinking you don't deserve it, or what's wrong with him if he thinks that I'm so great because your self-esteem isn't good, or it would just be so unfamiliar to you. It would be so foreign to you because you've been treated so bad all your life. That's not your model of love and relationships that you know. It's unfamiliar. You pick fixed upper guys, and we think of them as bad boys too in a way. They have, they have, they have a sad story to tell about, about their childhood and things like that. A lot of times we choose guys based on their potential to succeed in the world more than their actual success. That's a lot of times what we do. You know, we find someone who's a little rough around the edges, who, but who, who we, be, we believe has potential and that we can clean them up and with us being the wind beneath their wings, they will succeed and soar and be successes in life and they will be forever so grateful to us and they will love us so much and take care of us forever, be with us forever because of what we've done for them and and how we help them flourish and all this great stuff. Much of this will not ever be spoken and ever said and it will be like I made, I made another video on um, unspoken contracts that we have and transactional transactional relationships and transactional love which isn't really love at all where it's like if I do this for you you'll do this for me and it's a, and usually they're unspoken contracts that aren't really fair and we get bent out of shape when they're not coming true. Stop focusing on why. It doesn't matter why he's a bad boy. A sad childhood, doesn't matter. You know, none of that matters. What matters is what he's doing and how he's treating you. And, and you know, I, this, I said this about bad boys, there's a name for that, but this actually goes, this is the same exact thing for if there's toxic females, same exact thing. If, if guys can end up getting tr drawn in by drama queen females, other toxic behaviors that females will have, and it's the same exact thing. We're, we're just really bad judges of what is truly feminine and masculine energy a lot of times. Bad boy energy is not the manliest man. It is not. That's a boy. That is a childish boy. And drama queen females and, and you know, divas and all that kind of stuff, high demand females or females that are cheating or, you know, super hyper emotional and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Those are also immature females. We're so focused on what do they think of me, being attracted to them, be, you know, being liked by them, being attracted to them, that we never stop to think, what do I, do I like him? Do I like the person that he is? We never even stop to think about that. We don't even think about what our needs or what our likes and preferences even are. Because we're so busy trying to be chosen. We're so busy trying to be liked. Another thing that happens, is that we have a time schedule. We have a, we, we get on a time schedule, times when we're especially vulnerable to this, where we need some we need some place to put our energy, some place to define ourselves, some plan for our life, something like you know, something we need to be claimed, we need someone to love us, we need something we're feeling lost, we're feeling aimless, we're feeling directionless, and we are looking around for the nearest person. If that nearest person is a bad boy, we will dismiss the red flags. We will deny the red flags. The good news is that usually if we end up in these situations where we end up getting victimized is that every time we can see that we, the big part we played in it, the role we played in it, how we were very much, you know, we weren't protective of ourselves, we weren't, we weren't using good judgment because we had all these things that were playing against us. We had an agenda. We had an agenda and we were talking ourselves out of the truth talking ourselves out of reality. And I, this, I was very guilty of this. Very. So, you know, the antidote to this, of course, is to get real clear of what our non-negotiables are. Don't lie to ourselves about these people, about people when we go out with them. And don't tolerate, don't tolerate being treated badly and know for a fact that the only person you can change is yourself. So if you are going out with someone with the intention of changing them, that's a really bad plan. That is not gonna work out. The only thing he, the only thing he's gonna end up changing is his status to single on his social media. They're the love bombers, are the ones that will come right in there, tell you everything you want to hear, totally future fake you, and then, and then ghost you, whether it's after a, a first few dates or whether it's after ten years of marriage and two kids. It, 
it doesn't matter. They, and they won't care and they will have no guilt about it either. So what we ultimately want is we want a guy who's focused, determined, actually keep us safe. We'll actually be there in, during, during difficult times. We'll be the one, if you're on the Titanic is, you know, sinking, we'll be the one like shove you and the kids out of the way so you can get on the life raft because that is exactly what narcissist, psychopath, bad boys, you know, bad boys will do. You know, they are not the ones that are going to take care of you, protect you, keep you safe. They're the ones that are going to turn out to be your enemy. They're going to be the biggest harm to you and your kids that, that you'll ever know. You'll end up having to try and protect your children from him. Fun for, a, uh, fun for a minute when you're 18 or, you know, whatever. But once you have kids and you're settled and you're looking for a partner in life, you're looking for someone who's going to be there when you get the, um, you know, the biopsy comes back and it's bad. Or, the you know, you, you're going through something. That is not the time that you want someone like this, you know, and you learn that in the most brutal of ways. And the best thing to do in that case is to get right with yourself, to work on yourself, stay single for a while, raise your standards, make yourself a really high level woman who, you know, isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to put up with being treated poorly and make sure there's an ounce of desperation in you. Because desperation and not wanting to be alone and, you know, whenever, whenever being single it came to be the worst thing a woman could be, I, you know, I don't know, but it is definitely not. There is nothing worse than being in a bad relationship. And so, you know, you have to be right and whole with yourself. And the very, very worst thing you can do, and I certainly have done it, is to be have stuff you haven't worked through and so you're vulnerable because bad guys, truly bad guys are going to go for vulnerable women are going to go for women who have been abused, haven't worked through their stuff and are trying to escape if you're looking for a guy to be your getaway car that's going to be a bad thing for you and every time that I've ended up in a really abusive situation that's exactly what I was doing was the perfect setup it was absolutely the it was just an ideal formula for a terrible thing to happen and bad situations and finally that was the end of it after that I was so broken that I just was I got sing I stayed single for a while like a couple of years and just got right with myself and got whole and got to where I I was more confident there. My my life was actually functioning. I was doing well on my own. When lo and behold, I met the man that I am now married to, and I have never been treated so well. There's no way I ever would have married someone who didn't treat me so well, because my life was working. I didn't have anything I was trying to escape. I didn't need to be saved. I was I had saved myself. Happy to find someone who wanted to, wanted to be partner with me. I was a whole person who met a whole person. And he was a nice guy, had the quiet confidence, was truly, is the person who would definitely save me and my kids before himself, the first man ever to put me and my kids first, the first man in my life ever to put my needs first. But that was never going to happen as long as I put my needs last, as long as I didn't even know what my needs were. Women want a bad boy, they just like certain qualities. Like, they like somebody who's assertive, someone who takes charge, someone who takes uh, pride in their, in their appearance. So, the advice to the, to the good guys is, don't, don't believe this myth. It's not about girls wanting assholes, that's not what they want. And girls that do want that are broken girls. You don't want girls that want an asshole. And there, there are some that do want that. They, they don't know that's what they want. They're all messed up. But th those girls are going to be bad trouble for you anyway. But as far as regular healthy girls go, healthy women go, they just want a guy that's got confidence, who knows what he wants and can and be and, and he knows that he wants them, you know, and will claim them. Because part of the, you know, part of the male-female dance is women want to be pursued. They want to be claimed. And men need to do the pursuing. They want to pursue. They want to, you know, they, they need to want to do that. It's been, it's been trained out of you somewhat. But you have to be, you know, we're looking for the guy that's going to have the confidence to approach, have the confidence to tell us what he wants, have the confidence to, to tell us 
you know how great it is to hear them say I want you you know I want you and, and, and express and not be too shy and too prim to say exactly how he wants us you know when he wants us where he wants us you know we love that we love it doesn't matter how much of a lady she is she's gonna love it and uh, so don't believe the bad boy myth anyone who's into girls are into bad boys are gonna be trouble and most women who who are not looking for are not gonna make your life a nightmare are just looking for you to have confidence quiet confidence and you need to be authentic and not not a fake good guy we want strong good honest people that's what we want we want people who have a quiet strength who have a self-assuredness who have standards for their life standards for who they are have integrity and authenticity that's what we want we want a quiet confidence and we want authenticity more than anything a regular guy just you know living the way you live doing the thing you're doing having your life going on not nobody's desperate here everyone's confident and whole whole and healthy and doing fine and having a good life and just wanting someone to partner up with that's my story about why we are into bad boys or not if you guys have anything you'd like to say about bad boys whether whether you have history with bad boys or whether or not you you know what qualities it is that you're looking for in a in a man or same with men if you you know because this is also happens with with girls too there are bad girls you know let's not forget that there are and uh, yeah so let's just talk about it in the comments and please like this video like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already all right Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.